Yeah, the lighting is horrible, but it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, we record this. So they have game shows in England on TV where people they don't necessarily win. They're like, "Oh, no one's won tonight. What a shame! Come back <laughs> next week." I'm like, what? You do a good, <laughs> like, do a good Brit. What? I still love that. I went to drama school there. Oh shit! They um, got, you, got you some training. <laughs> got you some education. I did, and uh, I've told. I think I told Buddy this. Like I work on All American once in a while, and Daniel Ezra. It, the star of it, mm -hmm. he, I was working with him one day and we were doing a big scene in Crenshaw, um, in Crenshaw about, it was, anyway, he, he gets up in front of everyone in the community and says, you know, we need this and we're not going to close our school. Yeah. And every time he did it, he was so good. Uh, I, I, there was something so familiar about it to me. And so later in the day, I went by and I said, Daniel, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something so familiar about what you did. And then each time you did it, it was just more brilliant and more brilliant. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, thanks. So then the next day, we were back on a loft. Mm -hmm. And we were Da Vinci and he and I and Jalen, because I'm with Jalen on that. Uh, we're all in the cart and we're going, Jalen's driving us. And I said, you're a Brit, right, Daniel? And he said, yeah. And I said, which drama school did you go to? And he said, I went to E15. And I said, that's why I went to E15. No wonder, no wonder I knew this was so familiar. Are you kidding me? He's like, you went to E15? I'm like, E15. East 15, it's called East 15 mm -hmm. Acting School. Wow, so that's kind of like the... It's a very methody school. Like the... Yeah. Like the uh, Sandy Myers band, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that type of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee Strasberg, all that. Yeah. And it was the Joan Littlewood's theater workshop, and they were just very methody. And Brendan Behan was the uh, resident playwright there, the Irishman. Um, and a lot of shows. How long? Now, because I know Lambda, London Academy, Academy Dramatic Music Arts. and Drama. Yeah, Drama, yeah. And dramatic. I work at. Is that still in play? Is that school still intact, or? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I didn't know. But it's more this. music, you see. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I just know that's popular there. Well. Oh, this is another thing we have to talk about today. We need to talk. I think I already told you. Hmm. Bass Reeves. Who? Lawman Bass Reeves. The next. Uh, uh, the next Taylor Sheridan. Who's Taylor Sheridan? The guy that does. Right, he did. Uh, he's an actor. Yeah. Now he's the producer, though. Oh, okay. Okay, so. I think I know what you're talking about. Was he an X Men? No. Look at no. He was in all of the Sons of Anarchy. He wrote. Oh. oh. Those. I'm a, I was a big Sons of Anarchy fan. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, Charlie Hunman came to Sacramento uh, during one of the big, uh, and it was the same. It was the day before. We we're having our Martin Luther King event because we we're both doing it at the at the uh, Sacramento Convention Center, mm -hmm. and so I remember because we we're loading uh, some of the stuff up mm -hmm. in one of the other ballrooms, and dude, now I've never seen so many motorcycles. It's the whole, all of like J Street around the whole Convention Center, nothing but motorcycles. And then of course everybody was there. I was like, damn! And I was coming through the back area where they, the loading dock area. Where actually, where I know Charlie probably came through because there's an elevator mm. that goes through to get up to the top. And I was like, man, I hope I see him, but I never saw him. But, uh, but yeah, I was a huge, huge uh, Sons of Anarchy. Matter of fact, uh, my wife got me, uh, I got a uh, Sons of Anarchy. She bought me, a, I don't know how the hell she found it, but a long sleeve t shirt. Mm -hmm. And it was black and orange and had the whole logo and everything. Everywhere I wore that, everybody's like, dude, where'd you get that, man? Yeah, that's Taylor Sheridan. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is. Right? But yeah. he wrote, so he wrote Sicario, Hell or High Water, right? He he was in Wind River. He he produced Yellowstone, uh, 1883, um, like NCIS, 
Which one? Um, he was in NCIS Los Angeles. Now he's bringing it to Florida, NCIS, Sons of Anarchy. Wow. He was actually in it, and he was the deputy, but he was in it, and he wrote it. Wow. And then started What's producing it. Taylor Sheridan. That so, name just sounds so familiar. Yeah, Yellowstone, right? That big series. Yeah. Published that 1883. Yeah. That just came out with the LaMonica Garrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all him? Uh-huh. Here's the new one. I See, I don't even want to tell you until you start this. Okay. Did you want to start? We're going to start recording. Yeah, give me, give, me, start. give me the two minutes. Okay. Veronica Mars, CSI New York, NYPD Blues Guide. The Guardian. Oh, my gosh. He's putting so many people to work. And see, those are jobs. Those are real jobs. So I went to, to work for him on this new series that I'll tell you about when we start up in uh, Texas. And And also when I'm on any kind of a, an interview situation, I, I always, uh, I always kind of freeze when people say, "Oh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite?" I mean, I have so many favorites, and then I have to come up with names of people, and I am, um, I know that I have to be, not dyslexic but dysphonic, mm -hmm. so I'll think of someone and I'll say the opposite, but that's part of I think why I'm a an entertainer mm. because if I am playing if I'm in a role and I'm playing someone I memorize that and yeah. so I don't trip on things and I think that's mm -hmm. the the grounding of acting because you can become something completely whereas I, as yourself sometimes you don't feel like as grounded as you could be right right uh, and I'm totally ADD, and and but I mean that in such a, a a positive way, because I think that what we do when we're ADD is we go out and hunt. Uh, we're not farmers. We don't stay in that. I haven't eaten anything, so I'm probably my stomach's gonna grow. But we we are we don't sit there. We see things in film. Mm -hmm. We don't see, you know, a lot of people think in words. Did you yeah, know yeah. that? No, I. I can't. Well, no, it, that makes sense. But they, they're very, they're not. I, I don't mean to say that they're mentally slow, mm -hmm. but they're only thinking in words. They're not thinking in film. Yeah. Film is just happens like there's so many things going on, you couldn't even have enough words. Mike check, Mike check. To describe yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Good, good on this end. Okay, cool. Would, would you like it? I have a granola bar thing. Oh, yeah, I, I was really, yeah, we had chips. I don't know if you wanted chips or anything. Just the girl, the girl's hungry. We gotta, we gotta feed her. Yeah, but if I do chips, then it's gonna sound... Are you crunchy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Do you have any, like, a soda? Mm-hmm. Just water. Just water? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just stay with my... I got a big-ass bag of chips. Oh, yeah, we do. I got a big-ass green apple Gatorade in my SUV. I'll be fine. You sure? As long as this doesn't pick up the growling in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me show you. Just hold on. Hold on. It's one of those uh, chocolate chip granola bar things. I always keep them in my, my bag just in case. I have a few things in there, but I know that what I have in there is going to be. One of these? Sure. Here, I'll take a little bite of that. No, keep it. I got plenty of them. Nice. I got okay. plenty of them. No, keep it. Please. Here, I'll take a bite and hand it back to you. No. <laughs> you eat it all, young lady. <laughs> You eat all your supper. <laughs> eat your supper. <laughs> eat your supper now. Yeah, see, people don't, they like to do a southern accent, but they really don't know anything that is associated with, with what you're saying. Yeah, oh yeah. Like I'm supposed to say when I'm in Texas, well, if someone says welcome to the south, you're supposed to say, oh honey, aren't you just the sweetest thing? This ain't the South, this is Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and you know who you just sounded like reminded me of? Olympia Dukakis, from Still Magnolias. 
That's what I, you said. I, mean, I didn't know anybody. I thought I was, I was talking to her over there. One of my favorite movies. Should we go on? Should we go on Instagram Live? What's up to you? Yeah, let's go on Instagram Live. Yep. What's that? It's like on Instagram. So. Oh, I don't know anything about it. But I just I'm just following you with your leads. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you're you're the boss, Applesauce. That's right. You're the boss. No, let's just we'll just record it. We can go live next. Okay. Let's get this off. Yeah, let's do it. For sure. Uh, just give me a mic check one more time, shall we? Hello, mic check. Hey, Vince, give me a mic check. Good afternoon, it's Vincent D. Miles. We got Vincent D. Miles in the house tonight. We got Chevy K. Booker. I'm a Rose Monk Thorns, or the other way around. You'll <laughs> soon find out. The one and only is Chevy K. <laughs> one and only is Chevy. Army Strong. Chevy. That's right, Army Strong. All right. AKA 14. And we are recording. Booker. Three, two, one. All right, for sure. Yes, 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 y'all. What's going on? We are back at another episode. We are back. This is the first episode in a minute, but this is the Yeah Buddy podcast. We are back. We are switching it up this time. We got a whole new cast of uh, people to talk to. Last time we was doing this show, we would just go to like like random like networking mixers and just pull like business people to the side. Like, we're going to interview you now and stuff yeah, like that. That's yeah. just how the whole podcast came. But we're back 2.0 and stuff like that. So I decided this time, uh, every episode, I'm just bringing a couple of my friends in the entertainment business and just chat up, just talk about what's going on in Hollywood and you know, just our backstory. So today my special guests are none of the ladies first, Miss Shelly Booker. Hey, yeah, hi, yeah, thanks yeah. buddy for having me back. Yeah, Shelly, um, Shelly was on the the Funny Business podcast originally. So funny Business. Funny right. Business, yes, and yes. And yes, and I'm Shelly K. Booker. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram yeah. and uh, yeah. Cool. And then, uh, then last but not least, we got my man, Mr. Vincent D. Miles, up in the building, y'all. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, just glad to be here. Appreciate you with the invitation, there, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you, you got this beautiful young lady, Miss Shelly K. Booker. I yeah. like how Vince spits game. Well, Am yeah. I allowed to say that? Yeah, that's cool. We, that's how yeah. we can say that. Well, well yeah. actually, I was looking for approval for, from my millennial sons because they say that I'm not allowed to say that. Oh, okay. What and I'm not allowed to say. Do they say courting you? Let it allow, <laughs> allow to court you, my fair lady. Or they say that I'm not allowed to say slide into my DMs. I'm not allowed to say that. Either. Oh, yeah. That's a, well, you know what? You do you, boo boo. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, yeah, they'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I still I do that. But no, we all we all up in here. We all this is all the our, our whole connection. If anybody don't know, we are all SAG after actors up in this building mm-hmm. representing and stuff like that. Been on some crazy, uh, crazy, crazy movie sets and things all like mm-hmm. that. So, who who who's been SAG the longest? Well, I joined in two thousand seventeen. I joined in like nineteen ninety something. I joined 1993. Oh, yeah. Yep, so we're about the same. Yeah, and then I joined uh, after, like I was telling you, buddy. Mm-hmm. And then I joined after uh, in 1995. Oh, yeah, so y'all was before. Yeah. yeah. It was, and uh, I was in the after as well. And yeah. I, I think I remember doing Young and the Restless. Oh, because right soap opera fall, yeah. fell under that's the all after the, rules. All mm-hmm. the, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I ended up becoming eligible, actually. I did a soap opera. Uh, they did a remake of Valley of the Dolls. Yes, they did. And um, it was it was only shown from the Midwest to the East Coast. That's why no one ever really saw it in oh, California. Okay. But um, I got a uh, as a background artist. It was like only three of us. We were like regulars. So literally, mm-hmm. we worked Monday through Friday, and uh, we worked what we called the bullpen. The bullpen was like the office part. Uh, so uh, the I don't know if you guys, well, you would know, Sally Kirkland was like the main star. Uh-huh. And then this, a, a very hot um, young Latino who ended up becoming a good buddy of mine uh, named Kamar De Las Reyes. Ooh, uh, he the, Yeah. If you look at him, look him up also. He's, he's been on a lot of stuff. I heard you guys talk about Miami. Matter of fact, you saw him on an episode of, uh, of uh, CSI Miami. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's how I became a, an after member. And then... And, uh, Years later, we end up breaking. So here we are. Yeah, here we are. That's crazy. Yeah, I think I got mine. I was like I said, I did the three background roles. I can't mm-hmm. remember. I think the first one I did was 
uh, San Andreas, background mm -hmm. of San Andreas at the Rock. Mm -hmm. Then the second one, uh, I want to say it was uh, this independent film called Kicks out of the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, oh, wait, didn't you do last uh, Blackburn in San Francisco? Yeah, I did. Because then Hilton did Jack. So that's where I met him. Shout out to Hilton. Hilton. The, uh, the Bay Area. Shout out to you, buddy. Yeah. Right now he's on some. Lavish vacation snorkeling. Yeah, he's over. He's always doing I something crazy. He's snorkeling. He's up in Egypt. He's doing his thing. Yeah. <laughs> Living large, yeah. yeah, he's always he is, and I knew him when he was a PA, mm -hmm. and now he's he's just killing it, killing it. But that's good. That's good. That's how. Do uh, you realize uh, how fortunate you were? No. Yeah. No. That no. Didn't happen yeah. These days. No. Yeah. Oh, but no. let me tell oh, you yeah. how it can yeah. happen. And I'm like, how I'm, did you become eligible for the ass? Well, I did a Coca-Cola commercial. Oh, see, I hate you. <laughs> see, I made mad money, and yeah, I had this I roommate. Did. So did you say Coca-Cola? Oh, God, right? Shit, but go. I had this, I had <laughs> I this roommate, and she would wait for my residual checks to come, and she'd say, "You got a check today? Let's go out." Oh. This would, this, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she also slept with, she was like the village bicycle, and she slept with every guy. <laughs> oh, wow. And she was <laughs> never home, and then they would she come. She said the village bicycle. Yes. I'm sorry, that's funny. And, 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 and she, that. and Give no offense, any, we can all be village bicycles, but what she did is she was never home, and then they'd all be like, knocking on the door, and I'm there, like, terrified. Yeah, yeah. One guy threw a brick through the window. Whoa. Oh, wow. yeah. Just so we can get on that bicycle. And he, she was, she happened to be home, yeah, and she happened to be home that night, and she, she said, I don't know who that is, and I said, that's funny, because he's yelling your name, Beth Allen. Yeah. Beth Allen. She was six yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, she didn't know it six feet. She six feet. Damn. That's some six feet. Yeah. Not one, six not two, six not feet. three, not four, yeah. not five, but and six. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, so my I have a friend. He's uh, Norman Galeas, yeah, or Galeas, Norman Galeas, and he's from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. So we got to this country. He actually he sent me a picture of or a video of him two weeks ago, and he's with Magic Johnson getting his hat signed. So I mean, I have this video, and I'm like, yeah, Norman. He's like sending to me. <laughs> but this is how he got into Stag after. And we have to put the, the hat of an immigrant on to anything to be able to navigate, but navigate in a way that has grit. Like, mm -hmm. I have grit, I know I have grit, but the grit he has is he gets I like here. grits too. I put, you like, I like, butter. I like my yeah. shrimp. Yeah. Some butter. Yeah, yeah butter. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, grits. fortitude, fellas. The inner fortitude that he had. He got here, he wanted to be in the Screen Actors Guild. He took his iPhone, sorry, I have an Android, don't tell anyone. Well, I'm a droid too. So yeah. Ain't no wrong okay. with droids. Okay, uh, all right. Except they segregate the text when it gets to someone who's iPhone, but we'll get into that. I think you hear when you right. like slam it down. It'll be like echo. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering what that. Yeah, that's what she like. You can hear it. We can hear everything. We can hear all that. <laughs> if I didn't have a, you know, like I don't have a face for radio, that's my problem. But so, so Norman, <laughs> Norman got here from Nicaragua. He had his iPhone. He got a SAG waiver. Made his own film on his iPhone, and became SAG eligible and joined. And how long ago was this? He did this about 10 or 15 years ago. Is that possible? Like, yeah, you, yeah. you have never heard See, that. There's, there's so many different types of ways now. To wow. Happen. You know that ain't right. happening today, though. Mm -hmm. The union is. Yeah, they're making it a lot harder. But if you get a waiver, they want to take your money. If mm -hmm. you get a waiver yeah. and you yeah, do a couple of those films, I mean, there if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So, so I'm so proud of him, and I and he's also a comedian as well down in Southern California. Oh, wasn't he? Mm. No one got Okay, I'm yeah. So he knows a lot of people. With you, so they call come. So with me, um, there was a film, uh, show for Showtime called Lush Life. Yeah, starred Jeff Goldblum, Forrest Whitaker, Forrest Whitaker, and Kathy Baker, and I was asked to be. A stand in. I had no idea what a stand in. This is my second job. Shout out to the stand ins. I had no idea. This was my second job. My first job, Last Action Hero. And I was just a passenger on the bus. It was, or uh, I was obviously with Arnold's. So. Yeah. So I get called, you know, from Central. I actually was uh, uh, Cynics Casting. 
because Cyn Cynics was the non-union, Central was the union. And so um, I got cast to uh, Cynics for this. It was a big party. We're shooting at a hotel. And the second AD comes up and says, hey, Vince, um, I need you to come do a do stand-in. I'm like, uh, okay. No, no, well, I had no idea. <laughs> so I'm like, just don't worry. We'll tell you what to do. And the only thing I had in common with this actor, it was that we're both black. Because, mm -hmm. you know, he was tall and skinny, you know, I'm more, you know, I was a lot. He was, he was, yeah, he was, yeah, he back then I was, was yeah. Was, was, and, and my stomach was a lot smaller too. Yeah. Back then. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's when I ended up getting three days of that. And I had someone who 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 had been in the guild for like years and they walked up to him and said, Vince, you just like hit gold. You he goes, You got people around here that have been in this business for 10, 12, almost fifteen years and still trying to get in the sand. And I had no idea what a blessing that was. Mm. Well, it is. I tell people like up here in the Bay like up here in the Bay Area, it's I mean, there's less sad work that comes up here, but just be but like I feel like the opportunity is easier to become sad now. Up like outside of like the LA studio system and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Everybody's kind of like gone. Oh, and stuff yeah, like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I would I would be safe to say that the three of us sitting at this table have been very blessed. Oh yeah, extremely. Yeah, because yeah. like we hear stories, people would be like, man, yeah. like right years, now, fifteen years, yeah, finally exactly. got my first sad I'm like, what? Yeah, like, oh exactly. my god. Right now, they're hey. saying they're like they're listening to this and like. Can I say MF on this? Can I say? Yeah, yeah, we'll fuck. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> this saying these <laughs> lucky motherfuckers really. I'm like, you know, because I mean, this shit doesn't happen. It, Coca Cola, yeah. and then, dude. Just, I mean, just doing all this like yeah, that's, he's just pointing at me like you did, you did something. I mean, yeah, I don't know that, what you did, but you did something yeah, to get to Yeah, but uh, you don't know, say it. Though. But no, I'm like from all the background work, like I was telling you, do like stand, like stand in work, bro. Like trust me. Yeah. You understand, like, like, sad, like, stand work got me health insurance. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and not a lot of people, and even with the merger, because that was our big thing merge yeah. SAG after make SAG and after come together, and then we could get our yeah. insurance. Bro, we never got our insurance, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, they got they came together, and we still didn't get our insurance unless we were steadily working yeah. every mm -hmm. day. Or even here's the thing I guess, yeah, I mean commercials get you your insurance but now with the new media agreements and everything they've done even commercials that you don't get it's different yeah it's different, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. so that's why I'm also a studio teacher welfare worker for minors in the entertainment industry because that gives me my insurance that I ought see uh, insurance there I don't have any any premium I have to pay for my wow. I just rack my hours really? up in my series and do what I do. And then that helps me do the other things, the creative things, filmmaker, producer, actor, all of those things. Okay. Uh, stand up, you know, stand once up, in a while. Yeah, doing, 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 yeah, doing your thing up at the callback bar, up at the punch yeah. Line. yeah. Actually, that show went so well. Yeah? Mm. You getting better? You growing? Yeah, I am. And I'm, I'm just sticking with certain subject matter and not getting too big and just working on the same the same thing and yeah. same delivery yeah just go on your, your and have your the signature because if you do different things all the time that's great but you never really keep you know you never really uh cultivate <coughs> your your stand-up and your your skills how do you feel like with um with doing stand-up and stuff like that how do you feel the transition from going like from doing um, acting, like having more of a background in acting and now doing stand up. Do you feel like we're, like, let's say you're, like, you're, I mean, even though you're still, like, young in the game, just like, um, do you feel your, your, where your growth is? Like, do you feel like acting has helped you be a better stand up comedian, even though, like, you're still, like, not at your best as a stand up comedian yet? Well, yes, because I mean, I know that comedians always throw shade on improv artists, but I was in an improv traveling improv group when I was a kid because I didn't want to be in high school drama mm -hmm. literally that theater it was just it was who was popular but I was 16 and I met uh, quite a few actors who were British actors that were here and they couldn't work so they would they would do these traveling um, kind of workshops and teach people how to properly you know walk the stage and do that 
And because of that experience, I, I went to drama school in England, and if I hadn't have done that and met them, I mean, Ben Cross from Chariots of Fire, God rest his soul, I remember him coaching my, my drama, you know, my Shakespeare's, and uh, Jeffrey Freshwater, Michael Halsey, God rest his soul, they were coaching me to get in. Uh, Neil Dixon, who is uh, very much alive and has incredible projects going on, and you know he was the younger of the group, so he's closer in age to me, because in England they go to drama school when they're 15 and 16, and he awesome. met these actors who were older than him. So I know him, uh, and he's very popular in England. You would have to look his IMDb up and say, he's in everything, he's yeah. in everything. Um, <coughs> gosh, um, that's why I know little Christian Bale, because he was in a film. That's how I met. I just so many things happened for me because I went, I didn't go the traditional route. I, I, would, I came here from New York when I was in high school the first time, and I didn't fit in, but doing doing the, um, um, sorry, I don't want to go, uh, doing the improv and then auditioning and then leaving California, going back to New York and doing all of those things, finally landing on my feet all happened because of that opportunity. Now, mm -hmm. comedy allows me to write mm. and I'm a storyteller and I always have been in everyone in my family and it seems like you yeah. are Vince too because of your family. Uh, I know that you've traveled everywhere, buddy. Yeah. That gives you the palette uh, to create. Mm -hmm. And so writing, and then I'm a, you know, been writing screenplays, and I have a film that I wrote. I have, as soon as the shutdown happened, I think we all flourished in a lot of ways, even though we were, you know, held back in a lot of ways. But what we did do is have this creative blossom and time to write ideas. So I have eight scripts ready to go. Wow. And this is just the first one. And then, of course, the Talladega Alien. I told you about that one. <laughs> that one. Yeah. That, that sounds wild. That's right on point, just because we just, like, we just admit that there are aliens and UFOs mm -hmm. and shit like that. So you get that. You, they probably get some funding for that. Yeah, yeah, but then also, we were talking about being faithful people. Do you think that God created just some people and not others? But how could we have this vast... Uh, if if it takes 200 million years for light to travel from the Andromeda galaxy, how can we be arrogant enough to think that we are the only ones? How could it be that vast? And you think, you know, God's like, no, I'm only going to put them on Earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? So, and that um, and that's a bit begs a, a bigger conversation. Well, it's like, you know, we're talking about that uh, that whole thing with the sub that went down. Submarine, yeah, well, yeah. well, well, so makeshift submarine, yeah. no, no, no. literally, if it was a real submarine, the submersible, it, whatever, it, let's put it this way if it was a real submarine, they'd still be alive today, but mm -hmm. you know, God rest their souls, yeah, God like, rest their souls. But, uh, you know, it's like we don't know what's down there. I mean, you remember, remember the, the abyss, mm -hmm. you know, what's down miles below the, the ocean surface. Mm -hmm. And I always make the joke, I said, Hey, I think Godzilla's down there, so that's you know. We don't know that. I mean, we don't, we don't know what's down there. We do when you think about it. So, to your point about us just being the only things on this planet, or humans, or any life form, yeah, there's so much that we don't know about. Right. No. You know, whether whether it's below the the uh, below the ocean surface or you know. And that doesn't galaxies. challenge anyone's faith as a Christian or a Muslim yeah. or as Hindu or yeah. or you know. Uh, as if they're Jewish, it doesn't challenge your faith mm -hmm. to say that God could have created more. Mm -hmm. How would that challenge? Yeah. You mm -hmm. would have to be able to reconcile that. Yeah. So yeah. that's you know. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. Good point. I think you, the, the the thing is, we as a, as people have to have, and this is just with everything in life, is have to have an open mind. And if you can do that, then you can comprehend and, and, and think outside the box and say, okay, you know what? You know what? There might be some truth to that. Mm. So, yeah, an open circuit is so much better than a closed is. circuit. Yeah, well, exactly. So, like, they, 
you know, that's I why see. it's so important. And then now, especially as actors, if you don't, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna grow as a performer or as an artist in any minute, whether you're an actor, musician, or whatever, if you don't, if you don't have an open mind. Mm -hmm. You have to be, you have to be versatile, you have yeah. to be open to change, yeah, you have to be all of that. Absolutely, because you cannot, you can't do, you can't do what we do. But as a comedian, and I can say Buddy is, he knows, he's one of my favorite comedians in oh, Raquel. He's so good at what he does. I, you, you every day, it's, I, it's the most terrifying yet exhilarating thing you can do. And you're always writing. You're always keeping it fresh. And anytime you want to be on a stage, you can be. No yeah. one's holding you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yourself. That's one thing, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you just... Get on stage, you hit the jokes, tell jokes whenever you want, and stuff like that. As opposed to acting, you kind of gotta wait for. Like, yeah, you have, you to, have wait to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait for it. Mm -hmm. You have to wait for it to perform. But yeah. rather than that, I'm like, ah, but shit, I'm gonna just go do it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's why I started producing. Yeah. So that I could produce. But then there's still a process, though. Yeah. You're producing. This yeah. is producing. This is producing. Yeah. Your film festivals. Yeah. yeah. When is the city soul coming up? August the twentieth, two thousand twenty-three, eight twenty twenty-three. Cine Soul. Cine Soul. Actually, I'm glad you said that. So, uh, uh, so as I was saying earlier, which Buddy already knows all this, but mm -hmm. since we have our, our new friend, or really maybe my new friend, because you, yeah, you guys already met my new friend Shelly here. Uh, so, uh, the um, 18th is the first day, which is going to be a party. 19th, we're going to have all the all the 48 hour films. We're gonna have uh, the Digital Odyssey uh, going on. And, and we're gonna have a SAG after okay. uh, uh, round table talk as okay. well. So uh, so basically Friday, Saturday, then Sunday is when we're gonna do Cine Soul. And uh, Cine Soul, two words, C-I-N-E, then S-O-U-L. Uh, Cine Soul is also otherwise Cine known. Soul. Cine, Cine Soul. Cine Soul, yeah. Hey, good. Es que yo hablo español. <laughs> <laughs> Pequito. Pequito. Yeah, see, see. Uh, so, um, it's also otherwise known as the Sacramento International Black Film Festival. Uh, we've been around for about 20 years. Um, a young lady uh, by the name of Nicole Maddox started it. Mm. And she ran it for excess amount of years and had enough. And then Marty approached me about taking a baton and, and running it. Okay. He said there's a party Saturday. Where's the party at? The parties. The party is Friday. Oh, the party's on Friday. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's to be determined yet. But okay, if you go to our website with CaliforniaFilm.net, mm -hmm. which is the website, which that'll have Cinesoul and has everything. In it. Which is cool. The way Marty set it up is that uh, that website can connect you to Cinesoul, to the Sacramento uh, Film Festival, and everything. So. Yes, yeah. and I've been uh, on Marty's email list for yeah, so quite you, some yeah. time. Well, if you're already on it, then you'll get it. So, hey, you got all the films selected already? Uh, for Cinesoul, yes. Okay, what films are we seeing? Um, well, if you can, give, I can tell you the ones. Well, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. But we have Eric uh, Qualls. Yeah, no, Eric's got a couple. Yeah, he's got about two or three films. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and forgive me for not be able to rattle them off right away but it's all good yeah but which is nice though because we actually this time we have uh, some films from a local from a local filmmaker which is nice yeah because let me tell you when we go up through all those submissions you know where i, I get a lot hmm. africa oh okay yeah i got get a so. lot of submissions from africa and some of them are actually pretty good believe it or not hmm. um i remember one of my favorite one was about a, a uh, Musician who played the oboe, and he, you know, he was lived in like a shack, literally. But I remember me; he kept one suit to he would use to wear for you when you go for auditions. But he would practice and practice, and he wanted to to uh, be accepted to this one prestigious uh, school. So he kept trying and kept trying, and then finally he got he got his letter, he got accepted, and the film ends with him in his, in his tuxedo. Performing in this big audience is so good. That's so brilliant. You know, but uh, it's funny because he would talk about he even gave this oboe like a name. Mm. Also, he was kind of he was like really 
special, with, you know, because uh, that was, believe me, that one, because of that oboe, it changed his life. So. I, that sounds like a yeah. very moving. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, and, and that's but and that's the way we were talking about immigrants earlier. Yeah. Going and doing things mm -hmm. outside of the box to get noticed because yeah. they have to, yeah. and that is grit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that took a lot of grit. I mean, in, you know, considering where this guy came from, you know, from very very humble roots, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that's the beauty of art, though. Yeah. You know. Beauty of art. Beauty of art. Mm. And then we get we get um now this one uh, we have another one that we did last semi soul was called uh, Brooklyn something but it was about a, a hip hop artist a French girl that was a hip hop well she was a rapper okay and she was good so this one we were actually even going to show it this time um, we we're going to try to plug it in because I told Martin we got to show that one again it was that good okay yeah but I tell you what the the young lady that plays the role of the uh, the, the French rapper, dude, she was on point. She was on point. You would, especially young artists, you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you would really, I mean, even I was like, wow, she's good. What was the name of that movie again? Brooklyn. 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 Yeah, so Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, and my grandparents and my great-grandparents and my great-great-grandparents, and I'm actually a 15th generation New Yorker. They are from Brooklyn. Uh, and, of course, Tribeca, and I was talking earlier, I have a film called Somewhere in Between that made the Tribeca Film Festival. I am an executive producer on it. I... I saw the opportunity to give money to people I knew who were great creatives, and if if six six thousand or sixty thousand films uh, go in and they apply to get into Tribeca, which is triangle below. Uh, 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 why am I not thinking? Um, triangle below. Bit, I'll, I'll, well, just as a New Yorker, we don't do the whole, the whole name of things. Mm -hmm. So Tribeca is just uh, the part in the bad, the lower part of Manhattan. Uh, so this film festival had a music video entrance uh, section selection this year because it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So to be able to go there. And actually, out of all of the films submitted, 60 were shown. So somewhere in between. Uh, it, here, the synopsis is that it's two will-they-won't-they they friends just enjoying a simple New Year's Eve until a man from the future bursts in, telling them the fate of the universe rests in their hands. So it harkens back to the 80s blockbusters and back to the future. Uh, producing is is another way for us no matter where we come from we all have stories to tell and if we can produce that and self-produce then no one can keep us out of film and no one can keep us out of this industry um, anything any festival what you're doing events bringing people together to tell that story is pretty powerful Oh. Yeah, he's already just on his phone. You did show me. He's yeah. no, trying to look up Brooklyn. Oh, he's trying to look up Brooklyn. Yeah, matter of fact, I found. Does Kamicha have a show? Uh, Tribeca oh. below Canal. How many? How many uh, films from Sacramento are going to be at the thing? Um, that I don't know. I can't tell you that because I don't want to give you a false number. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and if if you're going to do a, a portion where you're asking us what we're doing the projects that we're working on. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you about a project because, you, uh, you know, you're African-American men and this information is going to blow your mind. I worked on the Taylor Sheridan new miniseries in Texas called Bass Reeves. Do you know who Bass Reeves was? No, who's Bass Reeves? Well, he was a, a, a black lawman in Texas in the 1880s and 90s. And he was the original, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't, okay, um, now I'm kind of freezing up, but he was the original Lone Ranger. Really? 
What have you, we been told about the Lone Ranger? He's white. He's white. White, yeah. And Tonto was Native American, of course. Right. He was Seminole Indian because Seminole and the Creek are in there, and I'm, I'm part Native American as well. Maliseet in the <laughs> house. But this, when I found out, when I worked, first of all, I wanted to do anything Taylor Sheridan. I would, if you're listening, Taylor, I would clean the toilets on your set. A friend of mine, Chris Caldavino, is, is in my film, Fairy Tales Are For Losers, and mm -hmm. he is on the show with Sylvester Stallone called Tulsa King. Yes. 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 That's Taylor Sheridan as well. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Now, now, okay, yeah, because I've watched Tulsa King. Yeah, and so now he's telling the story of Bass Reeves. And then one of the producers and the star of it is uh, David Oyelowo. Oh, oh, yeah. He played, he played uh, Martin Luther King. Yes, Martin. he played yeah. Martin Luther King. And Selma. And Selma. And yeah. Selma. And Selma. Directed by Ava DuVernay. Yes. Yeah. He went to the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. Okay, the one I was asking about yes. earlier. Yes. Oh, okay. He did. Nice. His wife is a producer as well. Okay. On, on Bass Reeves. But the fact that we are finding out right now I'm this many years old I find out the Lone Ranger is a black marshal in Texas and what I'm gonna do is show you a picture of him because you're just not even gonna believe what he looks like Bass Reeves okay now I challenge anyone to grow a mustache like him huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. See him? Wow. That's dope. That's Bass Reeves. Holy cow. Here's a real picture of him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Incredible, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. He's a handsome man. And you're a guy. I'm sure he... Well, no, he's a good-looking brother. He's a good-looking man. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm quite sure he was holding it down back in the day. He was holding it down. I'm sure he was. <laughs> um, and he was busy saving people. Yeah. Uh, but so this story is going to be told, and I'm glad that that Taylor Sheridan has decided to not only tell the stories of other people that mm -hmm. he has, and yeah. especially 1883. LaMonica Garrett, if you're listening, who's so fantastic in that. He's in Lioness now. Mm -hmm. uh, another I'm Taylor Sheridan. I'm getting ready to start watching that. Taylor Sheridan. He's in that too? No, he's the, the, he's a writer. He's producer. a writer, writer producer mm -hmm. for him, I mean, yeah. But he always shows up in his, in his things. He does cameos? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Do I have chocolate in my face? No, you didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing so wrong impressive. Nothing so wrong with having chocolate on your face. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Making love connection here. Right. Vince's <laughs> army. Thank you. I love my veterans. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Um, oh, and then another thing we we're talking about today, and oh, tell me if I'm just like too controlling, you know? But we read about uh, these, there were these parrots at the zoo, and they were swearing and yelling at zoo, the people visiting the zoo. And then zookeepers, these woke zookeepers, split up the parrots. They're like, no, you can't be together. You can't be swearing at people coming in through the zoo. And you know what? That's just wrong. That's so wrong. They separated like, like the black parrots from the white parrots? Did they? Just, segregation. Dude, segregation. that's segregation against parrots. They segregated all the parrots oh, from one another. Par what were these what, like? What are people saying at a zoo? To where the parents can like mimic it, and it's so bad that they what, like kiss my ass, ass motherfucker, shit yeah. like that. I mean, but so well, what? But you know, someone's going in, probably cleaning up at the end of the day or whatever. <laughs> yeah, look at all this <laughs> shit. All these motherfuckers like, doing shit, yeah. right? Yeah, right? And right. they're just copying it. But you know what? So what? I so, would, you know what? Those parents were providing comedy. Probably comedy makes more. people laugh. That is funny. Are you funny as hell. And because I, I remember when I grew up, I had a friend Sandy, and she had this minor bird, mm -hmm. and its name was Smokey. Mm -hmm. And when you would knock on the door, Ooh, nice the sound bird. effect. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's, echo. Yeah. it's loud. Yeah, but it was dope. But that was a good sound effect. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. Oh my god. Uh, 
the, the bird, when someone would knock on the door, that you, the knock that you just heard, that almost Smoky. deafened, Smoky the bird. that almost deafened buddy, mm. would say, "Come on in," and I'd walk in and I'd say, "Sandy, huh? Sandy, are you here?" <laughs> Smoky, I walked into someone's house. The bird told me to come in. I was like, <laughs> "You really walked in there." This bird, <laughs> and we would spend, I would spend the night here. When I would spend the night, it would do the doorbell. So at like three in the morning, you know, you wake up, even if it's not your house, the right. doorbell goes, you gotta open the door. There's no one the there. Smokey. Smokey's over there laughing his ass off at you. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. We didn't make him stay in the garage or anything. <laughs> yeah. That bird, he's like, oh, I got hurt. <laughs> Smokey had hella jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to make hey that's her though she's a, actually she's uh swiss her name is kt Gork okay. or gorike that's that Gorik? was her she was the the star of the film brooklyn okay nice yeah we're gonna check that out shout yeah. out to uh, what was her name kt Gorik. Gorik. kt Gorik. yeah rapper that's her rapper so, look her up. so yeah mm -hmm. that's her right there she is She's gorgeous. Yeah. And she's you speak game of her too, Vince? Huh? Is she going to be at the film? No, 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 no. You sure? No, no, no. no, no. no baby. No, it's all about you, baby. <laughs> it's all about you. Faithful already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Besides, I mean, there's no way I can handle having you and somebody else. Right. My, my, my plate's full. Like a Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what happened? You know how we are after we had that. We were ready to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how we to sleep? Should I should have put sleep? my ass to sleep, boy. Oh, I give you a run for your money. That's yeah, she's answer. like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm out. You got, you got the good fruit snacks. Yeah. 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 Well, I am in a relationship, and I, I don't really talk about that, and I probably won't. But I'll tell you, one of the hallmarks or the prerequisites of any relationship is if they don't make me laugh, they get the hell out. Well, I will say, I've been, let's see, I'm coming up on my, let's see, what have been. So my wife and I have been together for over 20 years, been married since we got our anniversary coming up on. Oh, congratulations. 10, 10, 15. 10, 15, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, she's a redhead. Oh, a Texas redhead. I like that. her already. Yeah, Texas redhead. She's whiter than you are. Matter of fact, you're darker than she is. And I'm pretty white. <laughs> yeah, so that tells you. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you know what? Comedy is important. I mean, you got to, her and I talk about that. You got to be able to laugh mm -hmm. and make each other laugh. You know, because if you don't have a sense of humor, you're fucked. And not in a good way. No, and not in a good way. Hey, mm -hmm. that's my line. <laughs> well, now it's our line. It's dog. our line together. Now. Yeah. yeah. So and, no, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, because you and know. another thing is, age is just a number, but energy is everything. Energy, you can say, "Oh, how old are you?" And then, oh, and whatever. So, it's a hopefully, my wife won't kill me for for sharing this, but I got to mention this. You brought something up. My wife is like almost six years older than I am, right? So hey, we're watching something you. the other day and said, honey, you're a, you're a cougar. And she goes, you know what? And she says, actually, I'm a lioness. Kid you not. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So this morning I said, hey, what's going on there, lioness? <laughs> you know, I mean, you think of a cougar, they're kind of scrapping. You know? Yeah, but if you're a lioness, lioness you the, you the shit. I mean, like you, Beyonce. Yeah, you no. are, yeah, you are right the damn cougars for your yeah. lioness. Right? Yeah, uh. in, in, the jungle. in my yeah, case, exactly. Queen, hey, that's no jungle. I gotta tell her that too. I said, buddy, says you queen so, of the jungle. Put him up on game. Hey, yes, yeah, she's she, she, she about okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't even tell her I said it. You no. just call it. You just all right, no, but I want to give you credit though. All right, all right. I want to give you credit. You know, I believe in you credit, credit, right, credit. Right. You know, buddy is your Serrano de Bergerac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm like the devil and the angel. Yeah, yeah. You're like here's how to lose it, but now here's how to get her back. Yeah. We go, we go, we go exactly. Oh, that's you playing catch and release. Yeah, the boop, boop, boop. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But no, model say, oh, that's cougar and stuff. I said, I sent you a tax form. 
A tax form. <laughs> how is that cougar in? Is that what's the, is that is that how you get the ladies that so like hey look out I'm filing my taxes this year? Huh? Yeah. 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 I finished strong with a tax form. No more no more bumble no more bumble. They just want to see the ten ninety nine on YouTube like yeah. But here's the other thing because I'm a mom of millennials. Yeah. Sometimes I'll you know I'll refer to one of them and then I'll hear him say. Woof, 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 and I'll say, what's that? And he'll say, it's the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta trade that helicopter in for a BMW. Mm. Or whichever mm. car. A helicopter for a BMW? Yeah, black man working. BMW black man working. Do they have a helicopter lane on that freeway? <laughs> you know? But the thing is, is, is that, yeah, it's my time to shine and it's time to uh, kick you know, kick them not to the curb, but it's time to throw them out of the nest. So and that's okay. Oh, shit, you throw them out? That's, well, look, I mean, if they're paying rent. Oh, but that's a different story now. <laughs> How old is too old? Well, that changes now. Mm. That changes because of what we just went through. Talk about pandemic. too old for your about relationship or having with kids leaving the house. Kids leaving, leaving the, the house. house. Oh, that all, yeah, it depends, depending if they're going to school. It does, but let me tell. Well, well this is I my mean, philosophy. Yeah, well, I, don't, I shouldn't even. I don't have any kids. I got two dogs, so I'm just guessing. No, but here's the thing. The philosophy is this: a long time ago, no one ever left the house. Mm -hmm. They're a farmhand. You ain't leaving. Yeah, I feel like that's right? like a weird. Like that's like only like an American thing where they like. It's a 1950s construct where mm -hmm. everyone had the weekends off. Oh, I have the weekends off. Anyone who says that they have to have a job where they have the weekends off, I necessarily do not. I don't necessarily want to hang out with them. Yeah. Everything turns off on a Friday. You know, it's cocktail hour. What are they putting on their side? <laughs> <laughs> I've got weekends off. But I have a 401k. Check that song, Judy and the Lion. I don't need, you know, a 401k. That's not what it's about. If we say, I have a 40 hour work week and I go on two weeks of vacation a year, vacation day off, what the hell is that? <laughs> These constructs, and that's why my film, Fairy Tales Are For Losers, they are fairy tales. Think about the people now scrapping. Life is so hard. Is and there, so to say that they have to leave. Real quick. Is there a way that I could see that movie? Because I'd actually like to see that. Yeah. I can okay, show you. All right, Definitely. All right, go on with your thing, girl. But it's just that, how how do we tell, okay, you're out, you're 18, it's time for you to go out. Oh, here's this. You're 18, go, go to college. I'm an educator as well, and I am K through 12, actually junior college. I don't tell every student to go to college. Sometimes college is a waste of time for and them. Money. Money, money we know with all of the debacle of student loans we were just they were so predatory all of us owe the banks lots mm -hmm. of money that was the whole thing mm -hmm. to, and, to and keep us it. yeah they to keep it. us hooked in mm -hmm. to then have to go in and be the drones mm -hmm. and work 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 and pay into a stock market that was only for them mm -hmm. we were part of that pyramid scheme mm -hmm. So these she, she dropping knowledge today, bro. Yeah, no, she she does this every now and then. But the she construct. What is this construct? We always had the crazy uncle in the in the in the attic, right? Right, right. We had Uncle Fester. Right. Yeah, yeah, Fester. Yeah. Oh. The Adams family, uh Broadway, Sacramento, the music theater, uh there on H Street. I just worked for, for that. And one of the best musicals, I'm a Wednesday gal. Fuck Barbie. Okay. <laughs> Fuck Pink. Okay? I'm a Wednesday gal. And or I'm Mr. Freeze. Yeah, I see that right? she representing. Hey yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. my friend Kyle, who I work with on uh, Adam Ruins Everything, Pen15. Uh, oh, wait. Kyle's just Pen15. Kyle, he, his, his aunt did the voice of Honey. Honey! Where is my super suit? Her name really is Honey. He's not just saying Honey, because that's his wife. Mm -hmm. And his auntie, that's her voice. Really? Yeah. All right. Look at that. Suck it, suck it down. I'll be. But, uh, so yeah, I'm, I am all about breaking those fairy tales. Your wedding day is the happiest day of your life. 
wasn't yeah. mine, I didn't get to eat food. Oh. Mm. That's a how crying could, shame. How could that be the happiest day of your life? And you're the, and you're the, the bride. I was the bride. Get, and you didn't get to eat. Yeah. That's a damn shame. It is. And so these constructs, we need to question. Somebody dropped the ball on that. They should have made the one person who was designed or set up to take care of you should have made sure you, you ate. Um, that was my mother, and I parented her most of my life, so uh, that wasn't going to happen. Uh, I'm um, sorry. I, I well, sorry, Mom. Just for the record, I would make sure you got fed. Well, I know you would, Vince. Just saying. I just met you, and I know you would. So you know I would. I would make sure you had a full plate. And my guy yeah. does, too, man. He's a great cook. Oh, but, you got one. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's a good cook. Uh, yeah, you want to keep that one. He cooks. Yeah. Keep him around. Yeah. So, but it makes me hungry. <laughs> so, I, think, in, I think though, though, in the Afghan, I'm sorry, I keep hitting this, and I know you're like, yeah, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> um, as African American men, when you think about the constructs that you've been given, even in like the Anglo and the white community, what is this dangling carrot that they gave you? Oh shit, <laughs> dangling carrot. That's what yeah. it is. These yeah. constructs are dangling carrots. You're gonna have the perfect. Yeah, balance. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, the whole thing that you know that uh, you, you know is the whole. Well, hey, you, you know, you're 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 one of us, and you know you got the same opportunities as we have. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many times you heard that one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I mean, we can. Yeah. It's a big. A damn 24 hour show we going about that shit. Yeah. But wait a second. You you're baseball. You're yeah. all about baseball. Yeah. That's one thing we found out immediately that we love. Yeah, oh I love baseball. Well Derek Jeter when he retired, because I'm a Yankees fan, I don't I can check out the sunglasses, has. I already noticed that. So and then, my college coach coached in the Yankee organization, but we'll talk about that more. Great organization. But the the thing about Derek Jeter, I just love but always loved the captain. The captain, number two. When he, well, number two, <laughs> when he retired, uh, uh, Gates, JD, is it, uh, uh, Mr. Gates on PBS did his family history. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know that his great 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 grandfather was a freed slave, but he was the son of a plantation owner. What happened with that plantation owner, though, is he left $5,000 to his son, who was a former slave. That didn't happen often. That's the plantation owner would either sell or do whatever they did uh, to anyone who was their child, because, of course, they didn't care and they didn't want yeah, anyone yeah. to know about it. Well, that $5,000, his great-great-grandfather used as a credit union. He set up a credit union and loaned money out to freed slaves. He built a church. He did all of these things. He immediately had wealth. $5,000 then for anyone was a lot of money. Oh, hell yeah. All those years later in Michigan, Derek Jeter's dad is a doctor. Yeah. How does that happen? It happens because you have opportunity. And if you have years of of a situation where you don't have opportunity, you have your arm tied behind your back. And oh, yeah. Talk about redlining oh, and yeah. how they wouldn't lend money to people. Oh, well, I have this great house and it made a hundred thousand dollars, so I got a loan and I bought another house and it's just wonderful. And I just keep making money hand over fist. That didn't happen, that did not happen ever. Uh, and uh, my father died when I was nine, and I saw my cousins build all this wealth because they had an intact mother and father, and they left things to one another. Mm -hmm. And I had a grandfather that only left things to his sons, so my dad was gone, so he left nothing to us. So all the time, my cousins keep making all this money. Not that I, that I uh, fought them for it. I would too if I could. But here I am, my brothers and I were just scrapping. Oh, but it builds character. It, you're working so hard, it builds so much character for you. You know, you, sh you should do that, it's good for you. And, and then here I am, you know, raising sons, and a kind of a simil similar thing happened where their dad's not involved, and they're having to scrap, and I'm like, but why do our cousins have everything? Well, it's a big world, and a lot of people are gonna have more than you have. But, but let's just point out the elephant 
in, in the room, shall we? Yeah. Opportunity begets opportunity begets opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that 40 acres and a mule isn't just a saying. If people got that. Well, we're fighting, isn't... we're fighting for reparations right now yeah. in California. Yeah. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to see how that goes. We're going to see how that goes. It's a little bit of something. I think so, except that I am an independent and I cannot stand politicians and all they're doing is using that to sway yeah, no, it's not to that. Sway they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna, the right way Talk to about dangling, dangling, dangling the carrot? Oh, yeah, that's where and they're like going to say, say, the conservatives wouldn't allow it. That's funny because the conservatives aren't even in control of the state. So if you're really going to say what you're going to do and put your money where your mouth is, then do it. Yeah. And if not, you better give opportunities. Business loans mm -hmm. at 1%. Mm -hmm. Uh, housing loans at one yeah. percent or whatever. Or yeah. no, Bank of America. We're allowing people of color loans. Oh, how nice! But the of interest you. rate is so, so fucking high. high. There yeah. you go. You're gonna be in debt for the rest of your fucking life. Or um, yeah. just fill out this application here. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't qualify. Oh gosh, I want to give you the loan. We said we would, <laughs> but you don't qualify. Oh. Maybe next time. That's exactly what they're gonna do. You played that shit to the team because that's about exactly that's how that shit would go down. Method acting. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's, 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 that's that's. I dare you to try and shut me up. I'm only kidding. Mm -hmm. But no, no right? yeah, I mean, that's the reality. We're, we're gonna shut you up. We're about to wrap it up right now. So. <laughs> <Just like, yeah. laughs> you just playing? I'm just playing. No, but we are gonna we are gonna wrap it up. So we've been talking for a cool minutes so like that. Before we do any closing um, topics, uh, feeling on the strike. Sag strike? Yeah, well, I uh, participated in the uh, uh, the rally that we had at the state capitol this last week. How was that? It was, you know, it was. They had like was, union and non-union people there. It was, it, yeah, it was like, what? It was. How was like? I mean, yes, there were a lot of. There was some non-union. Non how people. how was that? Like, how, how do you feel about? I mean, I guess they supported, but then at the same time, I'm like, how is this your how is this I your know, problem? Because I, I, when I walked around, it's funny you should say that. I was like. Wait a minute! I know you ain't. You're not saying. Yeah. They're pat in the house. But I was like, you know what? I was just like, okay, you know where I'm with it, and <laughs> I'm over it away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but because I was like, yeah, but you know what? We did. It's Sacramento. Like Sacramento that, sac that's how small Sacramento is. Where they go. But like, you know what? I'm kind of glad you because on all all bullshit aside, mm -hmm. because we needed at least to show they support it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was happy for that. And they were the people that I know that that weren't SAG, they were in it for the right reason. Mm -hmm. um, and again, Sacramento, so dude, you know for this for a fact. There's probably You know how hard it was to find SAG like I, try, I was trying to find four SAG actors for yeah. the podcast. It yeah. was a struggle. It's this like being an armor and yeah. trying to find some African American brothers, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, there. Yeah, you can yeah. like, go look for them and find yeah, them, but you're from the shit. city Wheatland. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. well, that's where you live, right? Yeah, where's the Popeyes? Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Hey, actually, talk about chicken. Have you tried uh, the crunchy chicken at the gas station? Um, Dude, this is better than Popeyes. I'll, when we're done with this, I'll drop some game on you. Okay. I'm going to drop serious nice. game. For sure. Yeah, tri trust me. You're going to be like... I've been working, though, on an indie, and our indies we can work on that are SAG waiver, and they're not associated with the studio. And the day that they were down in... Uh, Silicon Valley, I was here working at Broadway Sacramento, Adam's family, um, oh, Ragtime's coming up, starts uh, a week from yesterday. And, and Rent's coming in too. Yeah, Rent's coming in, it's, wow. everything is spectacular. Rent's rent, rent, supposed to come in today. Everything is, What's supposed to come in today? Well, rent. it's, it's really? August 1st. Well, because it's the first of the month, I was a joke about. Uh, <laughs> see, you guys are comedians, so I, you know, I'm a little slow yeah. sometimes. I got All right. it. Yeah. But uh, so there I was here when they were there. Yeah. And then when they were there, like when they were in SAC, I was doing this film in the Bay Area called Didi, and it's about a young Taiwanese boy, boy coming of age, and it's his story. Oh, wow. Right right. So it's yeah, it's a lovely little. Yeah. But uh, I was gonna say, but yeah. So back to the whole uh, strike thing. I mean. What we're fighting for, obviously, the two biggest things, AI, 
and and he should, he should talk AI about and the decent contract is streaming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but you know what? They one of their offers was they were going to take someone who was an extra and scan them. Scan them and yeah. use them for their rights for the rest of their life. For the rest of their life. So, if you're going to be an extra, charge fifty thousand dollars for your contract that yeah. day at least. Yeah. I see the rate. It's still going to be like one eighty something. I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, you don't really care. Are you kidding me? Even Alien is like, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I posted this on my, my Facebook last week or whatever. And one of the things that I just say, and this is just that human thing. How much fucking money does one person really need to have? Yeah. Because here's the good thing, the thing about it, or it wasn't good, whatever it is. Is that when your ass leave this, when the good Lord calls your ass home, you ain't taking none of that okay. shit with you. None. Zilch. Mm -hmm. Nada. No. Whatever you want to call it. Goose egg. Nothing. So, I mean, this is just greed. Greed. I mean, that's, it's sad. I mean... It, We're talking about 2% maybe of their wealth. Yeah. And here's the thing. I'm not a socialist. I am a capitalist. But capitalism also has to be reined in. And we have quasi-socialist situations and programs which that is okay i call them commute i call that community mm -hmm. i don't need to redistribute anyone's wealth that's not the point the point yeah. is you need to pay a fair wage yeah, yeah. and yvette yeah. lee bowser uh unprisoned writer um and uh, uh just so many tv series that you knew like living single hey oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 she um Vince, you were right on Living Singles, weren't you? I stood, yeah, I went on it, and then I, uh, I, st I did a standing job for Brian McKnight, yeah. ah! who was stuck. Talking about Tribeca, he was stuck. I never will forget this. There was a big storm going on back east. He was literally stuck on the same plane with with De Niro coming to L.A., and that's why they they called me to come in and he was standing for him. So. I can rehearse with Queen Latifah and everybody else. Yes. So, Tribeca yeah. below Canal. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it before, but yeah, yeah Tribeca. And, and so Living Single, and I think that was her, was it a 30-year anniversary or something that just happened? But she received uh, a huge award mm -hmm. uh, for her work there. But she, anyway, she's right there on the front line with all of these young writers yeah. Uh, she's working with the Unprisoned Project. There's so many wonderful things yeah. that can happen. We're not at, we're asking for a livable wage. And most people are on a crew, or most people, they, they just need to pay yeah, their rent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like, where you can't. Pay them. Just yeah. pay them their wage. We're not asking you to redistribute the, yeah, your wealth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You ain't, it ain't coming out your fucking pocket. Yeah. What the fuck you worried about? Yeah. Yeah, you just recoup. Yeah, you just recoup yeah. recoup the benefits. It's, it's weird because y'all been in it for a while. This is the first yeah. price. It's like how long? Oh. How long has it took? How, like, it's been. It's been a it's while. Been, but it's but it's not just but it's not just us though. Because y'all right. But, the but guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DGA everything. went right back and settled immediately. Now when D I yeah yeah huh? when IATSE goes out, it's going out. They already mm -hmm. have a high, almost a hundred percent, and. PA is just unionized. Oh, did they? Yes. Oh, oh, good. That vote came in two weeks ago. PA for PA's big for production. PAs? Yes. Assistance? Yep. For PA's to be. They go on unionized? Yep. Good for them. Yes. Good for them. That just good for them. them. I'm glad. That because they, they get shit on so They get bad. nothing. And, yeah, good. Uh, so we need to work together. And I'm not trying to throw shade on my unions, but what? Several years ago when they made the contract, and I was, I took uh, work for a great show called Pen15 on Hulu, mm -hmm. uh, where I'm an actor, but also studio teacher. Mm -hmm. We were told, you know, we have the new media and this is the contract and they're not paying as much. They're not sure about streamers. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. And then there was a shutdown yeah. and we gave everything away. Our unions gave everything away to these producers. Yeah. Here's yeah. the point. Yeah. You don't give anything away. Nothing. Because the second you give one thing away, they're going to take, they're gonna they're gonna take yeah. it all. And, and that's, that's what, what they're, they're doing, doing right yeah. now. That's what they're doing. They're sure doing it. We need to say, you're kidding me. Every you, We're going to stay home. Well, we're hopefully relax and, and the new on. leadership with our union realize, okay. Frank Tresha. I, like, I love Frank. I, love I, worked, I worked with her on the uh, I was another standing job for Petition and the Beast. 
and she went out of her way to welcome me. Hmm. She's amazing. She woman. That's always up. good when you go into a she set and like the like Dude, the like the, literally. like the A list actors we, we were, actors, like we were down to earth. at I want to say Sony or Paramount, one of the two. But anyway, she literally took me by the hand and says, "Hi, I go come and say that you are." And I introduced myself and I said, "Yeah, I'm here." She goes, "Well, welcome." I mean, we're talking about Fran Drescher, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I, how often does that happen? It yeah. doesn't happen so, as often as you think. Needless to say, I became a huge Fran Drescher, and I watch a wife and I. We watch the nanny a lot of times, even though it's like off, but we still watch it anyway because we love that yeah. show. But there's so, but there's so many good actors out there. Yeah, uh, the dude, right? I mean, Jeff Bridges. Yeah, you know, worked with him. He's, Welcoming. Comedy. Oh, did you hear? Speaking about the the Rock, I posted that on Facebook. He gave some money to the for the, the actors. He did. How it. does that work? We get tap into that. Is yeah. That after yes, fun? there is. Yeah. There is a fund, and the yeah. Rock is amazing. Yeah. He does that. So many actors. We we don't even have, you know, the bandwidth here to be able to to talk about who they are and how yeah. they've helped. Yeah. Uh, but they certainly. Well, how much I wanted to point out about the Rock that you know, I was just like thought. But you know what? He's like that though. He's a, he's a real dude. He's a real dude. Yeah. I've seen him give away trucks and stuff. Oh really? Yeah. The guy's a man. The guy's a man. Well, that's the one person I have to worry about because when my sees the rock, I'm done. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. oh, and all my sons are wrestlers, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, hey, Dwayne hey, buddy. Right. So I'm gonna lose my wife, and I'm gonna lose. Yeah, you about to lose your wife and your side and too. My side. Wow, to the rock. Your struggle, girl. But you know what though? Hey, I you know he's the rock. God, you got to take that out. Hey, that's just not. Hey, that's, I'll take it. Yeah. Leave her dog. Carrie Washington, thank you. I mean, she's been out there for us. Yeah. Uh, Devin Edwards, one of our writers. Devin and I. Uh, uh, gosh, I, I just uh, Greg Kinnear. All of these good people I that love, I've worked I love, with. Yeah, I love Greg Kinnear. They're supporting a, us. I would just see, like to see him act more because I think he's such a great actor. Well, then you need to watch our series, Shining Veil. Vale. Okay. Yeah, and it's off. Courtney Cox. Courtney. Okay. Oh, on uh, Stars? Or yeah. Where is that? Yeah. Okay. Shining, and it's called what again? It Shining Veil. And it, right. it is basically The Shining. And it's, so a, what you're gonna do it's a parody because, of it. So what you're going to do after we leave here sometime tonight, you're going to text that to me because I'm an old geezer. And okay. I don't remember everything. All right. If you give me that, that way of watching. I sure will. Mm -hmm. If you'd like. And then uh, Unprisoned with Delroy Lindo and Carrie Drop Washington. Drop it all there. I met, matter of fact, the last time and, um, Jordan McIntosh. Delroy Lindo, I met him. He was speaking at the Capitol, and I was coming from somewhere, and I saw him walk on the street and stop him. And so he goes, hey, man, how's that? Goes, well, well, I'm so, you knew he went to ACT in San Francisco, right? And he's from England. No, I did not know that. Yeah, See, his parents gorgeous. are Jamaican. Yep. She, knows, she knows her history. She knows her, she knows her black men. I do. You know, I like the woman that knows her black men. Oh, good. <laughs> I've had to... <laughs> we we need we need you. She's having flashbacks. We, right we need now. you to, because you you're you're, our, you're kind of like our mole, our spy. <laughs> but yeah, but here's this thing: it's it's not any kind of bullshit virtue signaling. I don't like that's bullshit. So it's about community. Yeah. And making sure that we all get opportunity in mm -hmm. the country that we live in. Democracy so a great thing. Democracy is a great thing. As long as we all have that slice of, of yeah, the pie. That's, yeah, that's, that's true democracy. So, and women, you know, black women were slaves and they were freed from that, but they were still not free until 1920 and neither were women in general. Yeah. We were property. So we got we to gotta level up. Yes, yes. Uh, that's a great uh, closing statement right there. Anything else y'all want to say before we wrap up this here? Well, episode? first I want to just say thank you again, buddy. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you for bringing this uh, exceptional, beautiful, talented. I mean, where, where do I go? Uh, well, lioness. Another lioness. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> thank you for your service to this country. Yeah. Army, Army Strong, yeah. Army Family. Yeah. Uh, thank you, buddy, because, you know, I, I uh, have massive respect for you, and I can't wait to bring you on another show. I promised you I was going to do in July, 
But uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's brain worth, check, brain it's check. happening. Mm. It, it'll happen. And I pay my comedians. I don't ask them to show up and work for free. I'm gonna work for free. <laughs> so, and y'all want to extend the invitation for both of you for Set of Soul. Okay. Uh, for the whole festival, Sacramento Film uh, Sacramento Film Festival dot com, or you can go to cinesoul.org, either one of them. All right. And, uh, but we'd be honored to have you both there. And now, when you say extend, does that mean like does like invitation is be free or is uh, well? Uh, uh, we got a ticket package for us. Well, we'll, we'll see. Is there a SAG discount? We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, 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 see. Get, we'll get the SAG discount. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And then Shelly K. Booker, yeah. uh, Instagram. Uh, you know, give me a follow, and yeah. and um, I'm always very interested in in uh, making sure that young filmmakers and actors and artists get. Uh, play out there or know where to go. Uh, I, I'm always happy to point them in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, but don't just think it's happening for you. Some people it just does. Mm -hmm. But don't compare yourself to them. Compare yourself to yourself. Facts. Like that. You like that. You like that. And you can follow me. Yeah, buddy. E N T and at Funny Business on all social media platforms. Uh, this has been the Yeah, Buddy podcast, uh, season two, episode one. We are back at it, y'all. We're going to catch y'all next time. And... Well, that's good. We out? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I can show you guys a little bit of that if you want to see it. Yeah. Um, okay, yes, I'll please. just grab my computer over there. Um, so basically, two women... We met in drama school in England, one Brit, one Yank, uh, exited, exited their husbands basically in the same month and have to put together a provocative plan to raise five sons on two different continents. Oh, wow.